good evening everyone thank you for logging in uh, as you are aware normally we do uh, our monthly calls and uh, this is a platform where we normally try to interact engage with you and uh, whatever views we have uh, we try to exchange that whatever is the recommendation from our side we try to exchange that so this has been a, a consistent uh, platform where uh, we get to communicate with you. So that's initially uh, which we wanted to say that this is a, a thing which we do normally. Second part, I think this is a, a very special call for us because we have just concluded uh, the budget and uh, in this call we would be covering uh, part one on budget. Uh, we will try to decode the budget for you uh, what all uh, the budget highlights are, which all sectors uh, it, it's going to impact. That's what we are going to cover on the part one. Uh, part two, we would be trying to cover on the outlook part where we would try to cover on the equity and fixed income side uh, on, on outlook part. And finally, we would be opening up the uh, 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 discussion for question and answers. That's how the structure of the call would be. So uh, to take this uh, call ahead, uh, we have with us Mr. S. Nareen, ED and CIO ICC Prudential EMC. Uh, Nareen, thank you for joining in. I would hand over the platform to you. Thank you, Nareen. Welcome to all of you. Uh, thank you for part all of you on a consistent basis every month, regardless of how the markets have been moving. Uh, I mean, in my in my investing career of 33 years, I've seen budgets for long and uh, the budgets have slowly become less important because uh, whatever uh, the government needed to do has already been done. And uh, so, and uh, GST council has taken over some of the roles of what the budget was doing. So for uh, the government to be able to change the budget in a significant or make a budget which drastically changes things is very difficult. So what is important over this period is the fact that over the last three to four years, uh, the government has handled India's macroeconomics in a fantastic way with the result that India's inflation numbers came lower than US, which has never happened in my life. And uh, we have a situation where India, all the macroeconomic parameters of India has been much better than what you see in most of the emerging market countries, which resulted in India being one of the most favored countries for investing among all the investors. So what did the budget do? The budget did many things over the last many years. What the budget has done is ensured that you have a level playing field. So wherever there were loopholes for uh, saving tax among people, the slowly those loopholes have gone away uh, so that everyone pays a lot of tax. And if you are earning a lot of money, the government has worked in such a way that there are loopholes to save tax have gone away. So this year also many such loopholes to save tax by investing in debt have gone away in this budget what is the end result the end result is that the debt mutual fund industry has lot of scope to get money because earlier what was happening was there were a lot of other avenues where you could invest in debt where the tax was much lower and the ability to invest in debt mutual fund was lower because debt mutual fund had a higher tax rate than what you could get out of investing in other, those other ways of investing in debt. But all those loopholes have gone away this year that today, uh, whether you invest in debt mutual fund or you invest in all those other models, you are going to be having to pay the same tax. So which means that debt mutual fund has become very attractive from 1st April 2023. And uh, one can use debt mutual fund for investment by almost all the people in a very big way that is one very big change if you ask me uh, from an investor point of view the second what happened is that uh, which has happened over the last three years which has un completely un 
unconnected to the budget is that uh, computerization of our tax system on the direct tax and computerization through GST has happened. So what happens is whether uh, through the in computerization route, there is no way in which if you have invested in the mutual fund, you have to pay tax. If you have invested in many of the other financial services entities also, you have to pay tax. So consequently, again, you have a situation what we call a level playing field where uh, the through the computerization model that the government has intelligently created over the last decade, you have to pay tax on all your investment. That has also turned out to be very positive because uh, one of the first areas in which people had to pay tax for investment in debt and other products in the mutual fund industry was mutual funds. But today you cannot save tax by using investing in other modes also. And this was due to fantastic computerization work done by the government over the last decade. And that you would have seen, which is responsible for the huge increase in tax collection in the last two years. And that is primarily what we have seen over the last two years, the huge collection in tax that didn't come out of increased rates. It came out of increased compliance because of increased computerization and therefore people had to pay tax wherever they are invested in. So essentially what has happened as a result of all this is that mutual fund has become a very important and efficient vehicle for investment from an investor point of view. What else has happened? Clearly there has been a massive support given to CapEx. Uh, if you have lived in India 25 years back and you had to go, let's say, from Chennai to Delhi, the quality of the roads was very poor. And uh, today the quality of the roads is much, much better, primarily because of the capex done on the highway system. So first it was done in roads. Now what we find is a lot of capex has been done, is being done in railways that over the last three years and over the next three years or five years, you'll see a massive change in the way railways is working because of all the capex that has been put being put into the railways. So if you go back to the last 30 years, one of the things which had not changed was railways, but a lot of changes happening in railways thanks to the capex. And you would see it in the form of, let's say, one day Bharat trains, and dedicated freight corridors and various other things that are happening at this point of time in railways. So there's a massive flip that is being given to the railway system on the capex side. At the same time, the government is very conscious of the support that has to be given to the poor. So they have had uh, very good systems like the food subsidy system, the Jandan bank account system that has been created and various other support systems that they have been created. And you, if you have heard the finance minister's conversation in the budget speech today, you would know how many different types of support systems they have created for the poor, which is very necessity in a poor country like India. That is the third thing that they have done over a period of time. What are the impact? which we are going to see in all this, we are going to see continued growth. And uh, we, have, we have always had good growth. We will continue to see growth. At the same time, we are not going to see very high inflation. We are going to see inflation, but that inflation will be always within that, you know, six, 7% range. That is what we are going to see. We are neither going to see a situation where uh, currency is going to go completely haywire or something like that. That is also not going to happen. So every indicator of uh, financial economics has been properly, carefully maintained. So is there any problem in the budget? The answer is a total no. Is there anything which can be changed in the budget to make a what we call a dream budget? It was not possible. Why? Because 6.4% uh, fiscal deficit for the central government and uh, three, 3 to 3.5% fiscal deficit for the state government, that combination of 6.4 and 3 meant that there was no way in which 
you could have given big tax concessions to all the people. So what the government did was increase the new income tax regime and try to push people into the new income tax regime by giving them a lot of benefits and uh, giving them that benefit. But, uh, you know, you don't get any exemptions. And that is the model that they have followed and ensured that all the lot of small methods that people were using to save tax are slowly being removed. And that is absolutely the right model to do. If you are sitting in the government, that is the way it has to be done. And every step that has been done by the government has been thought through. Like they were seeing that there was too much of remittances in the LRS. So what they did was they increased the tax collected at source on LRS. Remember, it's not a tax. But they only said if you are willing to remit money to, let's say, take out money out of the country, you have to do tax collected at source. Does it mean it's a tax on remitting money outside? The answer is no. But what is wrong in collecting money? But what is wrong in ensuring that anyone who is remitting money outside is actually having a TDS? So what is wrong with that? That's a superb step that the government has done. Like that, they have done a lot of such small steps, which are all logical steps, in our opinion, to have a growth in the economy over the next few years. At the same time, ensuring that the government continues to collect revenue. And that is the framework that is there. So what does this mean for the market? What has been the problem of the market? The problem of the market has been inverse. Things have been very good. So India was one of the best performing markets. There was no market which performed as well as India. What happened was India turned out to be having the highest valuations. So the problem was nothing. There was no problem. The problem was India was the best performing market. So India's valuation turned out to be the highest. All other markets did very badly. For example, China, Taiwan, Korea, etc. Even US Nasdaq. So what happened was that at some point of time, you know, when markets do very well, they have to do badly. It's like, you know, real estate did very well for some period of time. So it did badly like that Indian market did very well for a period of time. So it had to do badly. So the last three, four months, that process is on. Whereby India is underperforming China or Taiwan significantly. Primarily or Nasdaq significantly. Primarily because India had done so well before that. So India was trading at a premium of 70% against the global valuation. I think it's now come to 30% right now. But it is still trading at a premium of 30% to global valuation. What this means now? That the downside risk to Indian markets have now come down. Earlier, you had a much higher downside risk. That downside risk has actually come down. As and when the portfolios of uh, January 31st are released, what you will realize is that the equity allocation in the dynamic asset allocation scheme like balanced advantage, the equity allocation has gone up. Because the fact is that right now, the downside risk to the equity market has actually gone down. And uh, that is primarily because the valuation has cooled off after in the last three to four months, particularly against all the Asian markets and against US uh, NASDAQ at this point of time. Is there scope for some more valuation moderation? The answer is yes. Will it happen? These things no one can answer. If you had asked me four months back, will in India underperform China 40%? I would have told you no way. Because I never thought it will underperform China 40%. So if you ask me today, will it underperform some more? So that the valuation premium goes away. I'll tell you, I don't know. I don't think so, but I, I can go completely wrong. So what we did in our January presentation, as you know, is we had recommended safe strategy because of this overvaluation of India, which was recommending SIP, recommending STP, which is recommending asset allocation schemes for lump sum, recommending fixed income scheme for lump sum and keeping some money in equity saving and equity arbitrage to park money for a correction which you can use at a different point of time. Is there any change in strategy there? Certainly not. The same strategy holds good. 
what has changed is that the downside is likely to be lower today compared to what it was possible in december and that is what where we are was the budget responsible for change in view answer is no it was a very positive budget it was in line with our view there is nothing wrong with that view except that it makes debt investment from 1st april 2023 or 30th march 2023 very interesting and much much better compared to all the other areas where others could use to actually save tax those methods were not better but those are all very very easy ways to save tax at this point of time so which are the areas where uh, the budget is very positive at this point of time clearly there is nothing like that i would say all areas are uh, equally positive and it is not that one area is positive or another area is positive i mean uh, we think that uh, uh, sectors like banking are attractive sectors like pharmaceuticals are attractive uh, technology has been doing very well we thought actually people have to do systematic investment plan but technology has been doing pretty well so overall i would say that you know many of the infrastructure related sectors are positive capital goods related sectors are positive we have been believers that systematic investing in consumption oriented sectors are beneficial given that the valuation in these sectors are a bit costly and we are very very big believers in debt as you know all the way from october november we have been telling people that debt is a very interesting asset class for anyone to invest in at this point of time and uh, and for that you know we have always believed in categories like all seasons bond fund categories like ultra short people who like credit risk funds these kind of categories rather than just take uh, categories like duration where uh, at this point of time right now the yields are not necessarily much higher than the lower duration so that is how we look at it at this point of time so overall uh, we continue to think uh, that is a great asset class asset allocation is a great asset class and systematic investing is a great asset class at this point of time so from a performance point of view currently our performance is has been very good in many schemes do we believe that we can have periodic setbacks in performance we do believe in that but right now our performance is uh, very good across schemes why did this happen we followed a certain process and that process has helped us in many of the schemes but uh, we would like to reiterate what sebi says past performance is not equal to future and uh, that is a framework we have always believed in but we always believe in following a stable long term investing process across all our schemes and that's what has helped us over the last decade and two and the same process we will try to adopt for the future at this point of time so to sum up uh, we think debt is a great asset class we think asset allocation is a debt asset class we can always consider many interesting strategies uh, whether it is the thematic advantage area the multi asset area has been the area where we focused on in our yearly outlook the reason being that we believe very strongly that this is a year where debt gold silver reit invade equity everything looks interesting and multi asset and passive multi asset fund of fund are two ways of looking at all the asset classes and uh, when you look at individual asset classes as you as we have been repeatedly saying equity is not dirt cheap gold and silver we were thinking we would be very positive but every day those asset classes have been going up so investing in a standalone gold fund or a standalone silver fund as it is because the funds have done too well like for example in silver the customs duty increases added to the returns so we have always we are right now concerned that investing standalone has this problem that the returns have come too much and we are always uncomfortable when returns come too much whereas if you are investing in a multi asset fund you don't get one asset class you get gold you get silver you get reit you get invet you get debt and you get equity large mid small so that's why we prefer that kind of a fund where we are not dependent on only gold and silver or we like passive multi asset which also has all the categories debt equity 
gold and go of global etfs so it's a very diversified kind of fund so at least one will do well another will do badly and uh, that is how we look at it from a different point of view so this is the kind of framework we are in so debt equity as a debt asset allocation multi asset equity savings which is a which has a higher uh, i mean uh, riskometer but interesting product is what we look at at this point of time so broadly we are very happy with the budget uh, although the budget is not as important as the past so thank you all and happy to take up questions narin i have already got a few questions so i am just picking one by one uh, narin the first question is uh, with recent correction and as you have highlighted it was a positive budget when uh, when would you be giving a positive or a table thumping call on equities see uh, you know table thumping calls uh, always require two things fear and valuations becoming low so if you get both these it becomes easy so go back and look at china 4 5 months back you had fear and valuations becoming low so uh, that is when table thumping calls come so if you look at silver 4 5 months back you look at the chart prior to that day when we talked about in our monthly call silver had given minus 20% in the last 6 months prior to that day so it was of course it's not such an important asset class so people only can i can only tell you it was minus 20% prior to that day but fear and valuation becoming low is the combination which results in a thumping the table asset class so whenever you see fear and valuation becoming low you will see that thumping the table asset class if you see valuation alone becoming cheap it will be a buy when you see fear and table the and uh, valuation becoming at attractive then it becomes a thumping the table asset class thank you narin uh narin there's a next question which is on what are the risks uh, you see when you compare the current year with the year 2018 uh, more or less the background uh, looks similar do you think the risk uh, similar to what we have been through in 2018 kind of a phase interesting question in 2018 you had a real estate market which was frozen you had multiple nbfcs which were frozen i don't think we have that situation today in return we have an equity market which may be a bit more overvalued that is the situation at this point of time so this is where we are so uh, so i think uh, i think it's slightly different i think the economy is in better shape than 2018 and with lesser downside risks uh, in terms of economic problems but in terms of valuation maybe we have as much problem as we have in 2018 so that's why the solution to all this is uh, multi asset or uh, asset allocation kind of frameworks so that the challenge of uh, valuations can be handled Correct, Narin. Narin, there are a lot of questions which on on uh, fixed income or debt schemes, uh, and they are requesting if you can elaborate uh, how uh, or why you feel that debt schemes uh, is is a great uh, investment avenue at this point of time, and how budget has kind of changed uh, the company. I won't be in a position to explain it uh, in great depth. but i will just uh, highlight uh, some of the points so if you look at uh, there is something there is a proposal on a market link debenture which you can read about uh so there is a there is a proposal on uh, for example on uh, these uh, annuity schemes above 5 lakh rupees per year so these kind of things that are there you know they all uh, were giving uh, 
lower taxation for investment in debt in a way compared to mutual funds where the taxation rules were higher so beyond that i would not be in a position to talk about it so so i believe we have a level playing field now and uh, that is how i look at it at this point of time. sure sure great right. uh, narin your view on investing in global markets especially us market would you recommend at this point of time investing in us markets from thumping the table call it has become a call similar it's become a sip call there if you ask me it was a thumping the table call some time back because valuation was cheap and uh, there was fear now that fear is gone away you look at the way markets are going up so you have today a situation when fear and valuations are cheap you have a thumping the table call now you have uh, fear is slowly going away so i'd say this is right now a period of sip again got it got it sure sure uh Yes. Uh, uh, Narin, there is another sector or theme-specific call again on uh, how do we deploy, especially in sectors like technology, uh, which we have seen kind of a correction. Can we again start recommending aggressively in the technology space? Your views? We've been recommending SIP there, and that is the view we have. Sure. Okay, Darin. Uh, I think this is a standard question which we normally get. That if we have hundred rupees at this point of time, and uh, if uh, we have to deploy, what would be your uh, asset allocation? It's it's not a straightforward question, but you know, based on of our safe strategy, you should be overweight fixed income. You should be overweight asset allocation funds. Uh, you should be overweight multi asset funds. and you should be overweight sips and stps that's what our model says so that's what i can tell you i can't give more specific than that because it's unfair to everything yes uh narin your view post budget on certain themes like manufacturing infrastructure uh, are you are you positive uh, you have these funds in your complete product bouquet so would you be recommending with the kind of capex push which we have seen no i have a view that uh, many of the thematic strategies whether it is infrastructure whether it is manufacturing whether it is quant whether it is export and services uh i mean uh, whether it is dividend yield i mean uh, many of these strategies are all uh, worth looking at at this point of time and i would recommend every investor to consider these strategies sure and uh, many of these strategies are smaller strategies so they can be flexibly managed so i would recommend investors to consider all these strategies and uh, each has their own riskometers each of their things have their own ch- own challenges but i would certainly tell request all of you to look at them sure uh narin this is on the uh, particular scheme which we have been recommending aggressively the question is uh, your view on all season bond fund which icic prudential mutual fund has been recommending uh, for the last few months uh, why do you think all season bond fund makes a case for investing when there is still more rate hikes expected from rbi see all season bond fund is a fund where you can reduce duration you can increase duration it's part of the dynamic bond category it's not a function of as long as you're willing to invest for 3 years it's not a function of where we are looking at in the interest rate cycle so you know as 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 the rbi has been tightening yields have been going down so it's not that uh, you know even in us you should see the last two rate hikes and yields have crashed so there is no connection between the two actually necessarily so that's why it's very interesting and that's why we believe that such a category is something which investors can look at 
uh, all the time uh, for long term investment of three years and above. Sure, sure. Marin, uh, there's next question on consumption as a theme, and the person is asking specifically, like if you look at the budget, uh, uh, there's some tax exemptions which is given under new tax regime. And uh, if you look at uh, the subsidies or Manrega kind of a thing, there has not been much of an allocation. So how would you look at the consumption space post the budget? What's your view on that? My view has been uh, that uh, consumption is a very long term structural story has always been not cheap. Sure. So that's why we recommend it for uh, systematic investing and systematic transfer plans. And uh, we believe that we run our consumption, Bharat Consumption Fund more in as uh, defensive a way as we can. But uh, it's a very deeply structural story, actually. And it's not dependent on the budget and uh, M M that MNREGA is a type of forcible consumption. Mm -hmm. But when jobs, good quality jobs get created, that is what leads to consumption rather than MNREGA. Uh, yes, Narin. Uh, next question is on uh, ICC Pro AMC has been recommending uh, funds with a lot of flexibility. Like, for example, when you are talking about business cycle fund or flexi cap fund uh, or let's say thematic advantage fund, uh, is your view still remains the same that uh, in the coming two three years you will still like to have schemes with flexibility or you can have more aggressive funds also in your recommendations so not a two three year view i have a guru called james pontier he has written a piece called 10 tenets of investing mm -hmm. he says that flexibility has to be at the cornerstone of an investing process uh, because uh, finally if you are going to say i'm going to be very uh, constrained that re sometimes results in uh, you losing money so we believe uh, in flexi cap kind of constrained unconstrained investing in any uh, thematic fund because that leaves you that's why we like thematic advantage as a fund over any individual theme primarily because then what happens is that the theme that uh, that we need to invest in can change so if you look at it, infrastructure as a theme did, did so well till 2007, but many people did not overstay in the theme. Like that, it's very important to be in an unconstrained fund. And that's what we believe in. Sure. sure. Nari, last interesting question, I'm just putting it across to you, that uh, ICC Prudential Mutual Fund is known to come up with innovative funds like we have seen. BAF as the first category, we have seen business cycle uh, like that, so where investors can invest. I think today it's important that we have very interesting products in our basket, passive multi-asset for one, Bharat consumption, mm -hmm. if you look at it, uh, transportation and logistics, PSU, housing opportunities, manufacturing, MNC. So when you talk about new products, we have to ensure that the existing products that we have, each of which is unique in their own way, focused on certain specific areas, they all should be also invested by our investors or distributors or MFDs. I think that's equally important that why should I talk about a product which I'm not yet even launched. And I think each product that we run is to be run for the benefit of the investor. And that is how we are structured as an asset management company. And uh, that's how we look at it. Sure, sure. Narin, we have covered most of the questions we are done with the question and answer session. Uh, I would request you to give your parting remarks for all the participants over here. Narin. So, uh, I mean, uh, our year goal was uh, SAFE, which is SIP, STP, Asset Allocation, Fixed Income, and Equity Saving, Arbitrage, and Multi-Asset Funds. I think uh, that strategy hasn't changed. The downside risks have become smaller, although the markets have been very volatile and downward bias from that day till today, which was possibly something which we were worried about also. I think uh, the budget has been a fantastic budget. It was exactly in tune with what we believe. There's no market reaction has got nothing to do with the budget. 
and uh, we think that uh, the long term outlook continues to be f- very nice provided we follow the safe strategy as a way of investing and uh, look forward to looking at each of our individual products each of our individual products have our individual uh, goals and that's how we see it so thank you all for supporting us in this endeavor to manage other people's money and uh, we hope uh, that we manage it well in on a continuing basis thank you all thank you narin thank you everyone for joining in uh, and uh, we would like to close this session right over here once again on behalf of icc prudential amc limited thank you for joining us thank you we'll close the call over here thank you Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.